Hello, in this video, I'm gonna go step-by-step -step on how you would do a risk assessment in cybersecurity in the real world. This video is based on NIST 800-30. If you are unfamiliar with risk management in cybersecurity, I do have a video on risk management, which you can check out right here. If you're new to my channel, I'm Nicole, and I have 10 years of experience in cybersecurity and IT. If you're interested, I do have a completely free training below that walks you through the most important skill that you can have within cybersecurity. Now, let's get started with doing an actual risk assessment based on this 800-30. Essentially, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to scope out what exactly we're doing. We need to identify the threats. We need to identify what's already in place to see if we have mitigating factors. And if not, we need to figure out the vulnerabilities. And then we need to determine the likelihood and the impact. And then that's how we determine the actual risk. Here's an example of where a risk assessment template may be when you're actually doing something at work. So here we have the we have the system name and system location. And then we have what exactly we're trying to do. So specific details with this. Here you document the risk assessment results and it'll look something like this. So let's get started. What you always need to do is you need to figure out what exactly you're doing a risk assessment on. And there are many different types of risk assessments. There are different levels of risk assessments. There's risk assessments at the system level, business and mission level, and also organizational level. This is just a system level because we're only doing it for this clinic web application right here and not for the entire organization. And you also need to know all of the information and where it's residing. What is the critical of that data? So it could reside on applications, databases, warehouses, share drives, media, and all of that. You need to know all of this. After you have all of that sorted out and you've documented it all in your risk assessment reports, such as right here, now what you're going to want to do is you need to figure out what threats are applicable to this system right here. And so there are many different ways to do that. There should be a cyber security intelligence feed where you can get a lot of these. There's CISA, there's Krebs on security is a good one, SANS. There's recorded the future. You can look at news events and see all of the different types of threats that are happening. For this example, I have state-sponsored disgruntled employee, organized criminals, and an earthquake destroys the data center. Now, from there, we have to figure out vulnerabilities. Now, the way you would figure out the vulnerabilities is many different ways. You could get a penetration test. You could have a vulnerability scanner such as Qualys or Nessus do a scan and check for common vulnerabilities. You could look at historical data. You could do bug bounty programs so people would actually bring you different vulnerabilities that they find on, say, your web application. You could do code reviews and all of that. To keep things simple, the vulnerabilities we found for this environment up here are uh, multi-factor authentic authentication was not enforced misconfigured identity access management roles, there was a lack of monitoring, and then there were no backup routines. What you would do from here is you would create risk scenarios. Basically, I have a list right here of all the risk scenarios. So you would have threat, a state-sponsored cyber criminal, exploits weaknesses, and then you would also do impact. What exactly is the impact of this? And because this is a qualitative and not quantitative, you don't have to put hard numbers on here. So unauthorized access to sensitive data stored in S3. You can have multiple vulnerabilities for a threat and you can have multiple threats for one vulnerability. Another vulnerability, so misconfigured IAM, the impact could be unauthorized access to sensitive data in S3 buckets or RDS databases. It could also be tampering with critical configurations, such as application deployments and things of that sort. There could be a cost and then also damage to customers and partners. Another one is the earthquake, so data loss from a natural disaster. The threat is an environmental disaster. The vulnerability is that there is no multi-region backup or disaster recovery in place. And so the impact of that would be permanent loss of customer data stored within your S3 and RDS. 
You could have extended downtime of critical applications, and then you could also could have a significant financial loss and damage to business continuity. Now that we have determined these risks, the vulnerabilities, and also what impact it would be, now we would need to rate the impact based on a scale. These scales are going to be different for each company and for what exactly their risk tolerance is. But if we go back to this right here, as we can see, we have our threats. So now we need to determine in terms of this number is what is the impact of the threat event. And then we need to also assess the level of risk. And then what's the likelihood of it? Basically, for that, what we would do is we would have our risk likelihood and impact chart. We have the risk scenario. We would put what's the likelihood of the state-sponsored cybercrime group exploiting the lack of multi-factor authentication and gaining unauthorized access. And we would actually rate it based on what our company has determined each one of these will be. We need to determine the impact of the st state-sponsored cybercrime exploiting the multi-factor authentication and gaining unauthorized access to sensitive systems and data. The impact of the state-sponsored agent attacking this healthcare clinic, I would say the impact is multiple seer of organizational operations, assets, individuals, or the nation. I wouldn't really say it's very high. And so the threat event could be severe or catastrophic. It could loss of mission capability to an extent that the organization is not able to perform one or more of its primary functions. So this, I would say, is high. So if they can't get to their clinic data, then they can't talk to their customers. Or for insurance purposes, they can't give the insurance company their information, and then they can't get paid. So we're going to say that the impact is high. Now we need to determine the likelihood of the st state-sponsored cybercrime exploiting the multi-factor authentication and gaining unauthorized access to sensitive systems and data. So if we go back to our risk assessment demo of what the organization defines as that, it would be the likelihood of the threat to occur. And so let's see, it rates very high, moderate, low, and very low. If you don't have multi-factor authentication and it's a state-sponsored, how do we figure that out? That is the subjective part of this. And as you can see right here, there actually is a case recently that this did happen. So two years ago, by exploiting default authentication protocols and print nightmare vulnerability, they actually had this installed and they still got hacked. So I would say if you don't even have it installed, then I would say it's very high in the fact that it's almost certain to initiate the threat event. So we're going to go back here and then we're going to change the likelihood to very high. This will be a four and then the impact of this will be a three. And where am I getting these numbers? Over here, I have labeled them very high, moderate and impact to get the priority of this risk versus all of the other risk. You're going to go through all of these risks you see here, and you're going to do exactly what I just did. And then that's how you're going to get which risk has a higher priority of a different risk. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this risk, likelihood, and impact matrix. And then we are just going to map it. So the likelihood of this happening is very high. And then the impact of this is also high. So what I would do is I would put R one. And then now we can show stakeholders in a nice little matrix graph thing which risks are more important than the other ones. So that's basically what you would do there. Now, if we go back to our risk assessment paperwork that we're doing, you would put the risk assessment results here and we need to do the mitigating factors. So, so what controls can we put in place for the state-sponsored cyber group not to exploit this vulnerability we have of not having multi-factor authentication. The risk rating is very high. What we can do is we can implement multi-factor authentication. That's basically what you would do for all of these different risks that you had, and then you would document it in this risk assessment. You can also map this to NIST cybersecurity framework category. You know, the cybersecurity framework, and then you're looking for identity access management. Now, you might think it's 
identity access management is identity, but this is the organization's current cybersecurity risks are understood. So it actually would be protect because as you can see, it's identity management authentication and access controls. Let's see. So PRAA. And then from here, you could go through all of these and then figure out which one is most applicable to this mitigating factor. There are a lot of different controls. Just playing around with all of these can be a really useful learning experience. Now, to recap, what we did is we determined the scope and the data and what exactly we were doing. We identified the threats. We identified the vulnerabilities and also the controls we already had in place. We created the risk scenarios and then we determined the impact along with the likelihood. And then we also got the mitigating factors of this. And so that is how you would do a risk assessment.